troubled system. We need to look at what's working and what's not working. I think uh, this is a case of what's not working. Letting criminals back on the street only to break the law over and over again. We're not doing our job. We're not we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Tonight, Denver 7 Investigates is putting PR bonds back under the microscope. Why is this individual given the free pass? Because that's what a PR bond is. It's a free pass. And asking how many crimes it'll take before a suspect is forced to stay in jail. He commits three crimes in a matter of a couple days and gets another PR bond in Denver. Help me understand. That doesn't make sense. A man was arrested three times, accused of crimes in four different communities, and he was allowed back on the streets after being granted a personal recognizance bond. Denver 7 Investigates has been tracking issues with these PR bonds for nearly a year. The court authorized bond essentially allows someone accused of a crime to stay out of jail without paying any money up front. All they have to do is sign a paper promising they will return to court. And that promise isn't often kept. Tonight, law enforcement officials say these PR bonds are part of a troubled system allowing more crime in Colorado. Here's Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. In the span of two days. It's a story that started with a PR bond in Pueblo. Four crimes are committed from an individual who is on a PR bond. Four cities, 117 miles, and 48 hours. Sure would have been nice if this individual stayed in jail so there wasn't future victims of crime. Cops and court records describe a trail of terror that started with a carjacking in Pueblo. Then 46 miles north in Colorado Springs, a second carjacking. From there, the trip continued north. 58 additional miles to Highlands Ranch. This video shows the stolen vehicle, a red Toyota Camry. Watch closely. You'll see what Douglas County sheriffs describe as an armed robbery. There's the car. Right, so there's the car. Watch the Camry turn around at the end of the parking lot. In less than 30 seconds, the guy who's out for a lunchtime walk becomes a robbery victim. He's called over by the suspect, and then the individual produces the weapon, and obviously he's backing up right now, scared, I'm sure. Less than two hours later, Denver cops spotted the car. A records check showed the Camry was taken in the armed carjacking. Here's a picture of what police found inside the Camry. They arrested 31-year-old Michael Sandoval. Public records obtained by Denver 7 describe Sandoval as a career criminal, a violent offender, a known gang member, and his record includes multiple felonies. Two days before his alleged crime spree, court records show a magistrate with access to the same criminal history we've shown you granted Michael Sandoval a PR bond. What's the story here? The story is the saga continues. This person should be in jail. And after his arrest in Denver, a Denver judge with access to the records detailing Sandoval's alleged Colorado crime spree gave the career criminal a PR bond. Sandoval's second PR bond in less than a week. Why, you might ask? According to Denver's district attorney, the second PR bond was granted because the judge did not find probable cause. What message do you think the system sent by giving this guy another PR bond? It's the same uh, message that uh, I think your stories have highlighted in the past, that lack of consequences, lack of accountability uh, certainly doesn't reduce criminal behavior. So how did Michael Sandoval show his appreciation for the judge's get out of jail free card? Just hours after he walked out of the courthouse, this police report accuses Sandoval of committing an aggravated robbery. This time the report says he simulated a weapon, stole another vehicle from a woman in this Denver grocery store parking lot, and then led police on a high speed chase before he was again arrested. Michael Sandoval is 22 CR. Within hours of his second arrest in less than three days, Michael Sandoval was back in a jail jumper and back before a judge. Your Honor, we would, we're asking for a personal recognizance bond. And his court appointed attorney asked for the trifecta just hours after police accused Sandoval of a multi-city, multi-victim Colorado crime spree the public defender asked the judge to grant a third PR bond in less than a week. But this time, Denver's district attorney's office essentially said, 
enough is enough. Your Honor, I do have some very serious concerns about this case. And some of those concerns include this memo from a Denver detective. The memo included, please keep this guy in custody. He is violent and dangerous. This time, the judge got the message, calling for a $50,000 bond. Make it a cash-only bond. This will be monitored by a GPS unit. But here's the unanswered question. Why did it take multiple arrests for multiple crimes involving multiple victims of a guy considered a career criminal with a felony record and a known gang member before the legal system finally slowed down Michael Sandoval? A question that may now explain why police are frustrated. How do you look at those victims and say, we're doing our job? Sadly, what has happened is the system is breaking down and it's telling the victims of crime, you're not that important. Ultimately, insight and perspective on courthouse accountability from two of Colorado's top cops. People deserve to be safe in their community, and when you have repeat violent offenders that are getting multiple PR bonds throughout the entire state, uh, we got issues. The issue with Michael Sandoval is also amplified when you realize his criminal record shows a history of failing to appear. This time, the judge's cash-only bond created a speed bump that has kept Sandoval behind bars. His next court hearing will be Monday in Denver. And a request to speak with Denver's presiding judge regarding PR bonds was declined. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. Denver 7 Investigates has been looking into issues surrounding PR bonds for nearly a year now. In February, data we uncovered found that last year in Denver alone, there were nearly 1,300 arrests for serious drug offenses like selling fentanyl. And nearly all of those were granted PR bonds and less than half made good on the deal to show up in court. And speaking to us in the spring, Denver Mayor Michael Hancock called the system broken. We have a problem and we've got to find our way to fix it. We've got to start holding people accountable. Denver 7 Investigates will continue to track down issues surrounding PR bonds. And in the meantime, you can catch up on all our reporting, including tonight's investigation right now at thedenverchannel.com. Tonight, a law firm is warning the city of Denver that it could face lawsuits over its ban on food trucks in lower downtown. The city made these mobile food vendors move to another part of town late last month, citing a push to increase safety in the area. This came a week after the police shooting that left six bystanders injured at 20th and Larimer. Denver officials maintain that shooting did not prompt its decision. As Denver 7's Rob Harris tells us, while changes to the order could be on the way, food truck vendors say the damage is done. Another weekend has begun here in Lodo, and it'll be another weekend without food trucks greeting people as they end their bar hops. By next weekend, that could be a different story. But even if these proposed changes are accepted, food truck operators I've talked to say they feel kicked while they're down. It was bad, to be honest. It was bad, I mean, and we cannot do nothing about it, you know, it's not us. The Amore Pizza food truck has been a fixture in Lodo for more than a decade operating all hours of the day throughout the week. But no question, they say, there's been a consistent peak business time. From 11 p.m. to like 2 a.m. It's like 80% of what we do. That's why even the proposed changes to the city's current food truck ban will mean big losses for Amore and other food truck operators we've talked to. According to those operators who have talked to the city, the plan includes a cap of six food trucks in the blocks of Lodo, which would be required to close up shop at midnight, cutting off what food truck operators say are their top hours for sales. It's still a small business. If you can be like 80% of what we're doing, it's like nothing for us. You know, so we pay bills, we pay rent, we pay everything, you know. It's like I'm working for free. Neither the city of Denver nor Denver police confirm these plans to us, saying only that they're in talks with food truck operators and details are still being finalized. In our talks with operators, they say they feel unfairly targeted in the fight for a safer downtown Denver. We're not responsible if people, you know, they're drunk and acting dangerous. We're making food. That's all we do, you know. Now at this point, it's not clear how the allowed food trucks would be chosen each night if the plan does go forward. And it's also not clear how these potential lawsuits could change the current ban or these proposed changes. But food truck operators I've talked to who have talked to the city say they've been promised more clarity as soon as early next week. In Denver, I'm Rob Harris. Back to you.
Denver police say they will increase their presence in school zones when DPS students return to class on Monday. Police remind everyone to watch out for more people walking or biking on sidewalks. And drivers should stop for buses that are loading or unloading students. Also, look out for school crossing guards and do not pass stopped vehicles near schools because, you know, they could be waiting for kids to cross the street. A Denver County judge will decide in two months whether to stop the state's order to reorganize the Adams 14 school district. Today wrapped up two days of evidentiary hearings. Adams 14 is suing the State Board of Education over its decision to reorganize the troubled school district and strip its accreditation. The district argues that the order has caused irreparable harm. Now, it wants the judge to both dismiss the order and restore its accreditation. The state's decision to reorganize Adams 14 followed years of poor test performance and below average graduation rates. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney says talks are ongoing to have former Vice President Mike Pence testify before the House Select Committee investigating the January 6th insurrection. So you think we'll see him here in September in this room? I would the hope committee? that, well, uh, I would hope that he, he will understand how important it is uh, for the American people to know uh, every aspect of the truth about what happened that day. Mike Pence was a key figure in the lead up to the insurrection, and he rebuffed pressure by President Trump and his allies to decertify the results of the 2020 election the same day the Capitol was stormed. People in that crowd could be heard chanting, hang Mike Pence. The January 6th committee is set to resume hearings next month. And as for Cheney, she lost this week's Wyoming Republican primary in large part because of her criticism of former President Trump. You will be able to see her full interview with ABC's Jonathan Carl Sunday morning at 8 on This Week right here on Denver 7. Elevators shut off at a busy Denver pedestrian bridge. They're breaking the ADA law that says that I have to be able to get around as well. Tonight, a former Olympian now fighting to get them back up and running. Radar screen still pretty active. I'll let you know which areas have the most chance for heavy rain this weekend. No starters will play for the Broncos tomorrow in Buffalo, but there's still plenty of reasons for fans to watch. Nick Rothschild has what to look out for in preseason game two.